Hi, I'm with Jackson back again, and uh, just to continue with uh, the the theme that I've been running for the last few months, I suppose, on uh, on leadership and uh, and passing on a lot of my experiences from from working in the sector. So, um, as you, if you remember, if you've seen one or two of the other videos, I talked a lot about the characteristics of of great leaders and the fact that it's great leaders that make great schools. Um, I talked also about a lot of the characteristics of weaker, poorer leaders. Um, and I also talk quite a bit about the importance of engagement, how, in, how massive engagement is in terms of, uh, of delivery and, and, and raising standards and, and getting the most out of people. And, uh, and the thing that I continually said was is that nobody delivers at the very best when trying to deliver somebody else's objectives. So, so to get them involved in the process is, is critical. And I, what I'd like to do is, um, is share with you uh, a presentation and uh, some stuff on leadership that, uh, that I've been doing for, for quite some time now, I'm working with leadership teams um, on, uh, on the importance of, en of engagement. So um, let me just run through this and, and, and hopefully this will sort of give a little bit of clarity of, of what I'm saying and uh, I'm more than happy if you want to get in touch that uh, I can send you over these slides. So, so on the issue of, of uh, employee engagement, so um, what, what it's been sort of defined as as an employee's willingness to freely give discretionary effort to their employer. So it's, it's basically what, what they give you over and above what you pay them for. And, uh, and basically the whole of the sector is propped up by that, isn't it? So everybody in the school doing, well, most people in the school doing over and above uh, what they're paid for. You've got government, certainly the leadership team, and all doing additional hours and working through holidays and whatever. So, uh, and in these difficult times, even more so. So, um, but that's really the, I suppose, the definition of employee engagement. But uh, it's interesting from uh, a lot of the research that, um, that how much more productivity, how much more you get out of somebody when they're very actively engaged in what you're trying to achieve. So basically I've seen here, when measured, employee engagement falls into four categories. So it'd be interesting to see if you've got any, you know, anybody in these various categories and, uh, and clearly if they're in the wrong category that you need to do something about it. So, so let's just have a look at the, the research. So basically, it's saying that somebody that's actively engaged in delivery for your, uh, your school and doing a great job, amazing job, is 300% more productive than somebody actively disengaged. You think, wow, that's an incredible percentage really of uh, better. But this is, this is the, what the research is saying. So basically, if you've got somebody actively disengaged in your school, you're getting about 40% of your money's worth out of them. So if we just take the, the salary that you're paying them as the threshold, as the 100%, they're saying that if they're actively disengaged in what they're achieving, and that's having a massive impact on the pupils in your school and the rest of the staff in your school, then why have you got them in the first place? That's the first question. But secondly, they're only giving you 40% of, of the value that you, you're paying them for. If they're somewhat, engaged, uh, dis somewhat disengaged, then you're getting 66%. So you're getting two thirds of, of the value of, uh, of what you're paying them. If they're somewhat engaged, you're getting your money's worth. You, you're paying them your salary. You're getting 100. percent You're getting uh, you're getting what you're you're paying for. But if somebody is actively engaged, in other words, giving you 20 percent over and above in the discretionary effort, and because they're so actively engaged in what we're trying to achieve as a school, and, and all the reasons they are engaged is because you've involved them in the process and the planning and strategy and whatever, then they're 300 percent. So. The, it's 120% compared with 40%, 300% more productive than somebody that's actively disengaged. And if you've got somebody in your school that's actively disengaged, you shouldn't have them in your school. You need to get them moving right towards somewhat disengaged. Once you've got them there, you continue to work with them. You get them into somewhat engaged. You get them working in, and if you can, right over to actively engaged. So, so it's an interest, it's, it's interesting research, but when it's set out like that, it shows the the impact. And when I was a leader in a school, I, I suppose in working with leadership teams, a question I ask all the time about individuals is, would this school be a better school if we had somebody outstanding in their place? That's the first question. And the second question is always, would, if you had carte blanche to do whatever you wanted, would you re-employ that individual tomorrow if you could? And that sends out a real strong message if you uh, if you wouldn't, then uh, clearly you need to need to address that. And but also, what, uh, what the, the things that 
also drive employees and what what uh, gets them engaged is on the cognitive side it's it's you know they're, they're thinking on the focus you know what is my what is my mission what is the organization's mission and are you sharing that people you got you got people engaged in that process they're also thinking you know capability do I have the right skills and resources to do the job so so that's what they're thinking on a cognitive level on an emotional level they're looking at you know they're looking at relationships with the supervisor with the leaders in the school are they you know are they trusted have they got trusted colleagues within the organization do you care about their way well-being do you care about the, their safety and do you trust them do they trust you is there a good system of recognition within the school is that validated and that doesn't mean financial recognition that sometimes it's just a pat on the back saying you did an amazing job there thank you for for the effort you put in and uh, and are they inspired and are they motivated to do the work and in previous sessions i've talked about motivation quite a lot and i've talked about uh, charisma as well and and how nearly every outstanding leader i've ever worked with has been charismatic what uh, what is uh, interesting this is this is uh, i share this with you this is something i use on a regular basis and this is all about really engagement and and individuals uh, will are they are they disengaged are they are they actively engaged and, and you know somewhere in between and what i do is is every single member of staff i put them into a uh, into one of these boxes so left hand side is the scale knowledge skill low at the bottom high at the top and across is motivation their will and are they motivated to do well or are they completely turned off so so measure everybody and uh, and what i do so if they're if they're very low skilled down the left hand side and they're very low motivated so they're in box d then why have we got them why have we got them in the school working because the impact is is very detrimental so we're looking at people clearly to be up in this top right hand box very highly motivated they're very highly skilled if you've got somebody in b which is highly skilled but not motivated then you've got to try and turn them around to get them over to e if you've got somebody in c they've got great will great attitude whatever but not really got the skill then you could always train them up to the required then but but the idea is is to have i suppose a number in, in the various categories you don't want anybody in d that's clear if you've got them in b you try to move them right into a if you've got them in c you try to move them up into a so that's something but but what i do in organizations we go through every individual we plot them so what have we got how many have we got in each of those categories so it's quite a nice little uh, method to use that um and and this was sort of one of the slides and this is just uh, basically two or three slides of a of a whole day or a, a training session leadership sessions that i run um but this view is that true leaders don't create followers they create more leaders and more leaders are created by getting them engaged, giving them the, the power to do it, giving them the authority, trusting them, getting them to uh, to do things, take take some risks sometimes and just have a gamble. I'd rather people come to me and apologize afterwards than come and ask permission every single time before they can do anything. Have you created the right culture to create more leaders in your organization? So once again, just a snapshot of, uh, of a lot of leadership work that uh, that I'm doing. I hope that that, uh, that has been useful and, uh, and I look forward to seeing you over on the next video. So thank you.